That's right, we got a game show here, a competition based around the weirdest old newspaper ads that I could find. Now you might be wondering, who are the contestants? Well, I put up a signal to the history YouTuber community and five channels answer the challenge. They are Mr. B, Tipsy Fish History, Dr. Czar from History and Headlines, Levi from History Documentary, and last but not least, Jarrett from Ginny Blogger. So I had a good little set of five history YouTubers, right? And that's awesome and everything. But then I thought, you know what? Let's spice things up a little bit. Throw in a total wild card contestant just to shake things up a little bit. So let me introduce you to our special guest and sixth contestant, Twitch streamer and comedian, Tom Walker. All right, so our contestants are set, but what are they actually trying to do here, right? Like what's the goal of the show? What are the rules? Well, it's pretty simple. I show the contestants a weird advertisement from sometime in the past of the United States, and they have to guess what year it was printed. That's it, easy. Scoring goes like this. If you're off by 30 years or less, you get two points. 20 years or less, you get four points. 10 years or less, six points. Five years or less, you get eight points. And hot dog, if you are right on the money, that is 12 shiny new points just for you. But all right, enough blabber. We got seven total advertisements to go through here, so let's kick it off with Advertisement number one, which tells us everything we need for a wonderful salad. All right, so let's go through this. Tomato, okay. Piece of lettuce, sounds good to me. And, little Miracle Whip. And that's it. All righty, well I give this a taste test. I'm gonna give you, the viewer, a chance to guess what year you think this ad is from. Okay. Mm Did you guess 1959? If so, you're right. Let's go check the tape and see what our contestants thought. So we have tomato, lettuce, and tomato lettuce and and miracle whip miracle whip miracle whip all you need for a wonderful salad all you need for a wonderful salad all you need for a wonderful salad by craft so we have craft here in new zealand in australia i, I i'm australian I'm, I'm not just sick i don't know what miracle whip is i've never had any dealings with it so as far as i'm aware this might well be good if it's miracle whip it has to be at least in the 1930s i think that's when that came out my immediate guess would be tail end of the 1930s i'm thinking about like how popular sandwiches were in the 1800s, and I don't think they were that popular, so I think I'm going to narrow this down to the 1900s. I reckon I'm going to I'm going to go something like 1940s, like close to the wall, because this is vegetarian and very cheap to make, which um, during the war would have been absolutely fantastic. So Miracle Whip ended up becoming a thing in 1933 during the Great Depression. It was an alternative to mayonnaise, I think, because mayonnaise was very expensive for a lot of folk. I've I know a little bit about the various gelatin salads, like candle salad and things of that nature, uh, that kind of cropped up. I, I want to say because of food shortages or maybe it was because just gelatin had just been invented and there was a need to showcase it. Like people hadn't worked out it was a bad idea yet. It has the vibe of like World War II era more than World War I era. Feels like when before we worked out what a salad was. It looks like a pretty nice ad. Yeah, we'll go 1940. Find it, lock in the answer, number one, 1940. Hey, 1940, that's only 19 years away from 1959. History documentary off to a good start with four points. I would say probably 1939, just based on when this came out, knowing kind of the economic struggles of the time, especially because there was a downturn in 37, 38. So 1939 would be my immediate guess for advertisement number one. Another good guess, 20 years off, that's worth four. I'm gonna go earlier than I think, and I'm gonna say, 1919. I think that's wrong, but you know what? I'm, I'm sticking with it. 1919 is 40 years off our answer. Unfortunately, I can't give out any points on that one. Um, let's go 
1948 for this one. Nice guess. Only 11 years off. That's another four-pointer. I'm going to go 1954. Something about that feels right. Something about the graphics definitely looks a little bit... Not, not 30s or 40s. Maybe 40s, but yeah, 1954. Huge guess from Ginny Vlogger right out of the gate. Only five years off, that's eight points. I'd have to guess the wonderful salad dates from about the mid-1960s, perhaps 1965 when salads first seemed to become more mainstream for the common man. Oddly enough, real salad dressings are a lot better than using Miracle Whip. Only six years away from 1959, Dr. Czar off to a great start with six points. All right, so let's kick it to advertisement number two, which is trying to get us to buy a $3 pair of shoes. Nothing weird about that, right? But then you keep reading through the ad and you see that this pair of shoes apparently comes with $100 of accident insurance. So apparently they think you're somehow gonna cause $100 of damage to your shoes, right? But no, I don't think that's what it is. You see, if you scroll up to the top of this advertisement, you'll see a header that has a picture of a revolver and a dude getting bonked on the head with a two by four. So what, is this just a pair of shoes that comes with a hundred bucks of general accident insurance to your person? So if you buy these shoes and then walk out the door, fall in a well, are you getting that hundo? Maybe, I don't know, this is a hard one to interpret. Maybe it is that it's just a hundred dollars on the shoes themselves, who knows? Either way though, our contestants are gonna have to guess the year. But let me give you a chance to guess the year before I reveal it. 1895, let's go to the tape, see how our contestants did. So we have a sudden death or accident. Lewis Insurance shoe? What the fuck? Sudden death or accident, Jesus Christ. Sudden death, accident insurance. Um, based on shoes, which is real weird. Each pair contains a paid up accident insurance policy for $100, good for 90 days. That's, that was a lot of money back then. A lot of money now. $100, that, God, that would be a lot back then. Okay, explain to me how you can have a $100 insurance policy on a shoe that costs $3. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Sold by Ocoin, and the, the S on the sold is all messed up. It's all squinched together like Superman's S if he's like on the couch. Calf skin, dongola tops, I don't even know what the hell dongola is. I have, I have no idea what dongola tops are. Best wearing, most stylish, and the greatest value of any $3 men's shoes on the continent. So basically you're, you're not buying shoes, you're buying insurance. <laughs> then the shoes are just like a, an extra. This has got to be pretty old. Um, oh, we also have a dollar amounts on here that helps. All right, so three dollar shoes, that's old. Three dollar men's shoes. So this is before the 1930s, because afterward, the general average wage that somebody would get, three dollars is not going to be a high end thing for shoes. That's that's not going to be the market for it. That insurance policy is throwing me off here. This definitely seems older, especially the, uh, the text. Only. Corollary, I have this as like a Red Dead Redemption 2 ad. Unfortunately, I'm going gamer mode on this one. I have no idea when that game takes place. Fuck. Let me think about pricing for a bit. I know that within the 20s, that like a price for like a pound of butter would be about 50 cents. So you have six pounds of butter <laughs> or a pair of shoes. They're referencing the continent. I feel like referencing the continent went out of style in the 1900s because maybe the market opened up, I don't know. Probably late 1900s, maybe it's in the 1800s, but I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna say 1916 for this one. 21 total years away, that's worth a couple points. What's that, so like maybe 1930? Cause these shoes are made from some cool stuff as well, calfskin, that's not done anymore. So 1930 for number two. Dang, 1930 is 35 years off, so I can't quite give out any points here. I'm gonna say early, nine. I'm gonna go 1901. Something about 1901. Another close guess from Ginny Vlogger. That's worth six points, double digits already. If I was to give a date on this advertisement, I'd say probably 1924. 29 years off, that's worth another two points. Uh, I'm gonna say 18, uh, 72. No, that's stupid, that's stupid. 
No, I'm sticking with it. Oh. 23 years off. That gets Tom on the scoreboard with two points. Did these shoes save lives and personal fortunes back during the Great Depression? With the price of only $3 and the style of ad, let's go with 1935 for my guess, especially since a life insurance payoff of only $100 could not take someone far. 1935 is off by 40 years, so unfortunately no scoring here. All right, with two ads done with, let's take a peek at the scores. We got Tom Walker with two points, History Documentary with four, Mr. Beat, Tipsy Fish, and History and Headlines all tied up at six, and our big winner so far, Ginny Vlogger, sitting at 14 through just two questions. Will Ginny Vlogger's dominance continue, or can one of our other contestants rally to take the lead? Let's keep looking at ads and find out. Number three, all right, this one's pretty self-explanatory. To relieve misery of colds, take six, six, six. All right, what do you guys think? I'll give you a second to think about it. Nineteen forty-one. See how our contestants did. To relieve misery of colds. Okay, take six six six. <laughs> to relieve misery of colds, take six six six. Liquid tablet salve nose drops. Liquid tablet salve. No one says salve anymore either. Now I do know of this cold medicine. I've gone down some weird tangents. Trust me. Yeah, this is definitely um, has vibes of late eighteen hundreds or early nineteen hundreds. Um, I know this is a cold mess in a space out Jacksonville, Florida. You gotta think it's pre-satanic panic, so that rules out the 1980s. It, it has to be fairly recent at least, because people were like so superstitious back in the day. Is this a post-World War II advertisement? That's a good question. Probably. That's probably when the stigma's kind of gone away. This could be a thing in the 30s too. This one definitely feels later than the 20s. Maybe it is the 20s. Something about the font makes it seem a little bit later. Let's go with 1937. <laughs> Holy cats, that's three guesses in a row for Ginny Vlogger. They were only off by single digit years. That's eight more points. Just based on fonts, I think I'm gonna go ahead and guess 1930. 1924. A nice guess here, only off by 17. That's a four pointer. I'm going to go, even though I don't have much to go off here, I'm gonna say 1947. And Tipsy Fish clocks in a single digit guess. That's six. Man, this is not much to go off of, but let's just go ahead and say 1893. 48 years off, little too much, no points here. So I'm gonna go recent, even if I lose all my points here. <laughs> so I'm gonna go. Even if it's a shitty looking ad, I'm gonna go 1970. 29 years off, that's a two pointer. Are the makers of this cold remedy implying Satan himself is somehow involved in the manufacture of the elixir? This sort of marketing seems to predate the 20th century, so I'll guess maybe 1889, an era when various snake oil cure alls seemed popular. 52 years off, so I can't quite give out any points here. Okay, at number four, we got ourselves a pretty classic example of the kinds of like completely made up medicine that you used to be allowed to sell. Gray's specific medicine. Before taking, after taking. Pretty startling difference, right? But it makes sense, because according to the ad, this stuff cures impotency, pain in the back, dimness of vision, premature old age, consumption, insanity, and all diseases that follow as a sequence of self-abuse, whatever that means. All right, so what do you think? What year is this from? 1879, let's check the tape. Gray's specific medicine, before taking, after taking. God damn, what a glow up. <laughs> oh no, I feel like I look like the before taking guy. Look at that before and after, before taking and after. I mean, he look, he, it looks like he uh, is a brand new man. This is actually a remedy for if you've done crack. So before, the guy's looking like he's done crack and then after, He's looking like a normal chap again. Gray specific medicine trademark, the great trademark English remedy. Okay, okay. So I have to wonder in this advertisement, are they trademarking the photos? Is that how it worked back then? What is being trademarked in this gray specific medicine trademark on that? The great trademark. An unfailing cure for seminal weakness. 
spermatorrhea, <laughs> impotency, and all diseases that follow that follows as a sequence of self abuse. That f that follows a sequence of self abuse. What? <laughs> It follows a, a sequence of self-abuse. Oh God, what do they consider self-abuse here? Pain in the back, dimness of vision, premature old age. Well, yeah, if you're old before you're old, you don't want to fucking speed run being alive. Sorry for swearing so much. It's okay, Tom. Vision, premature old age. <laughs> I wonder if I'm suffering from premature old age and many other diseases that lead to insanity or consumption. The fact that they're using consumption here already tells me that this is probably pre 20th century. That term had kind of fallen out of fashion by the tail end of the 1800s, probably 1880s. I feel like this is sometime in the 1880s or something. So this seems like it's before the um, FDA came into play. Looking at the bow tie there, uh, the bow tie era. This is definitely between 1880s and 1910s. Definitely 1800s. Especially those drawings. The way those guys are dressed. One dollar per package. Again, really old. So if I was to probably make an immediate guess, I would say 1885. Hey, that's two guesses in a row from Tipsy Fish that were only six years off. Another six points in the bag. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna guess... 1895. 1895, off by just 16 years. That's a four pointer. Uh, let's just go ahead and say 1901 for this one. 22 years off on that one. That's another two points for Mr. B. Um, I'm gonna go 1882 on this one. And Ginny Vlogger with the closest guess yet, just three years off. That's another eight points. What a performance so far. I'm gonna go really old, 1905 for this one even though crack wasn't around, you know. Off by 26 years, that's a two-pointer. Like the Beast ad, I must think this wonder drug comes from a more gullible time, perhaps even earlier, like around 1872. Anything that could actually prevent a premature grave, or for that matter, insanity, would be well worth the money. And we close out ad number four with a big guess from Dr. Czar. That's seven years off, six points. All right, time to quickly check the scoreboard again. We got Mr. Beat and History Documentary tied at eight points. Tom Walker's got 10, History and Headlines with 12, Tipsy Fish with an impressive 18, but it's Ginny Vlogger still sitting on top with a 30 piece. Can anyone whittle down this commanding lead? Let's go to advertisement number five and find out. Hey, you know the Declaration of Independence, right? And you might even know the first few words from it too. But if not, no problem. Let me just jog your memory real quick. Here we go. The immortal words starting off one of the most important documents in US history. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary to recommend some brand of smoking tobacco. What, that's not how it goes? Well, according to this ad for Blackwell's Bull Durham Smoking Tobacco, it is. Let me give you a second to make your guess on this one. Eighteen ninety-three. Let's go check how our contestants did. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary to recommend some brand of smoking tobacco, a little reference there to uh, the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, Bull Durham. I'm actually I live in uh, North Carolina, very close to Bull Durham, and uh, well, not Bull Durham, Durham, but. I actually used to work for the uh, Durham Bulls on their post 50 video squad when I was a teen. I could see this from the 1870s. I'll be, I don't think you'd have this level of detail in a particular newspaper all the way up to probably even the 1950s. I could see this. I'm getting vibes of, of late 1800s. This is definitely, I mean, this is, this is a little bit old or later. I mean, the, the, cleanness of the font. There's not too much to go by. The guy, the guy that's dressed, he has a much older style of dress, but I feel like that was probably more part of the marketing sort of like, you know. I think this ad comes from, hmm, 
I'm going with lucky numbers, 1888. Oh man, are we about to see a Tom Walker comeback story? That guess was only five years away. Eight points coming right up. Yeah, let's say 1895 for this one. And Mr. Beat with a Haymaker, only two years off. That's worth another eight points. Again, I'm going to make my immediate guess and I'm probably gonna say 1919 kind of appeals to that sort of crowd in a sense, but that's probably the one I'm gonna be the least confident on because I don't have enough detail to really say. 26 years off here, Tipsy Fish pulls in another two. 1930. Yeah, we'll lock in 1930 for that one. I don't really have too much reasoning. 37 years is just a little too far off. Can't give any points on this one. Gosh, this one's so hard. <laughs> for so because of the guy's style of dress, I feel like it's early 1900s, but then the cleanness of the ad, it just makes it feel like later. I want to say sometime in the 1940s. I'm just going to go 1940. Uh-oh, 47 years off. No points on this one. This could be the opening the other contestants are looking for. We do know that such an ad for Bull Durham tobacco is usually attributed to the reason the pitching warm-up area of a baseball field is called the bullpen. So the ad might go back to the early days of Major League Baseball, probably around the turn of the 19th to 20th century. So let's guess 1900. And Dr. Czar steps up to the challenge only seven years off. That's a six-pointer. Ooh, seems like things are starting to heat up here. We might be headed for a photo finish. Let's roll on into ad number six and find out. So this one is more just a curiosity than anything. I'm gonna full screen it because there's a lot more detail on it. We got a citywide lottery in Philadelphia being put on by the German Roman Catholic Holy Trinity Church. Now, I don't know about you all, but I've never heard of anything like this. A church running a lottery of this scale? Like, this just seems like one of those things that's just been lost to time. Not to mention the absolutely insane amount of money being offered is prize money here, like $90,000 in total prize money, Jesus. But before I tell you roughly how much that would be today, I'll let you guess what year this is from. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, 1803. So inflation calculation is like tough when you go back this far, but the 90,000 being offered in prize money here is right around what 2 million bucks would be worth today. Pretty gigantic lottery, huh? Like, can you imagine your local church announcing something of this scale today? Like, hey, we're running a lottery for the entire city, $2 million in prize money. Just completely unheard of today, huh? Anyway though, let's check with our contestants. But yeah, it's an advertisement for a lottery put on by the German Roman Catholic Holy Trinity Church. Churches holding lotteries has to be old because if you did that these days, it'd be on the media, like, you know, people don't like the money taking, oh, sorry, the church taking money anymore. I'd say this is probably something that's being sponsored to probably build a cathedral or some large church within Philadelphia. You see how in like its thousand they have F instead of S. This is older. This is definitely older. I mean, look at how they write Thalfand. Ooh, ten thousand dollars, six thousand, three thousand, two thousand. Oh, Thalfand. Oh man, these. Okay, this is old as hell. Then. Uh, this is uh, very possibly 18th century for number uh, for the first thing because it has S's in the old style. I forgot what that letter is called. No one in the age of even great granddads, I want to say, is writing down Fevin. By the tail end of the 18th century, having F's instead of S's was really out of favor. So we're talking early 1800s at the latest, I'm thinking. But this is a lot of money for back then, really. This is a lot of money. German Roman Catholic Holy Trinity Church, no clue there for me because I don't know anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess 1790. A respectable 13 years off, that's worth four points. <sighs> I'm going to immediately say probably the year 1800. I'd say on this one. Now that's how you close in on a lead. Only three years off. That's a big eight points here in the late game. Uh, let's just say 1807. Mr. B with another great guess. Just four years off. That's an eight pointer. Um, so that's old. I'm going to go 1910 because that has to be super old. 107 years off on this one. Unfortunately, can't give out any points for that guess. Yeah, this is kind of hard. This is... Uh... Maybe it's just early 1800s. Let's go 18... I'm gonna say 1835. Ooh, and 32 years off for Ginny Vlogger there, just outside the scoring window. No points on advertisement six. 
The clue here is the way the letter S is printed, in the old style that looks like a lowercase f. On the other hand, the enormous sums of money offered as prizes give us cause to pause and contemplate how some sort of early 19th century church lottery could generate such money. Still, I'll go with my first impression and say 1801. Wow, only two years off? That's eight points. We're in for a close one now. All right, one last peek at the scoreboard before we go into our final ad. We got history documentary with eight, Tom with 22, Mr. Beat 24, History and Headlines 26, Tipsy Fish 28, and Ginny Vlogger barely holding on to the lead at 30. This is gonna come down to the wire. Can someone complete the comeback? Can Ginny Vlogger make one last clutch guess to close out the competition? Only one way to find out. Advertisement number seven. Another pretty simple one, basically just like an advertisement for a grocery delivery service. But look at that. Looks like you can actually call them to make your order. That's pretty cool. Let's see what the number is. Oh, yeah, this is from back in the day when you only needed one digit to get someone on the other end of the line. I'll give you a second to think about what your guess is for this one. 1920. All right, this is for everything. Let's go check in with our contestants. Call five for your next grocery order. <laughs> <laughs> Call five. Wow. There were 10 numbers at some point? All right. <laughs> so the office is phone number two and the grocery department is phone number five. Hell yes. Okay, great. Oh, that's got a sting missing out on one. So call, so we have to have, I'm assuming a uh, phone. Well, it's call, so we definitely know it's uh, not, uh, not earlier than 20th century. This would really help if I knew when the telephone was invented. Because it'd be like the day after that. I wish I knew, uh, I wish I knew the dates of, uh, like, telephones and stuff. I've actually gone through Val Organ in my past when I used to be a freight hopper. Considering how rural this place is, you're going to call five for your next grocery order. God, when would they, when would they have started to do something along that line? Maybe this could be after the war. I do know for a fact that it wasn't until, like, post-World War II that phones became a lot, like, a landlines became a lot more commonplace. Like supermarkets didn't become more widespread until post-World War II, so um, I'm, th I'm thinking this might be though at the beginning of that era. The circles around it, that like bordering, I feel like that was definitely later. Yeah, let's just say 1950 for this one, 1950. 30 years off, Mr. Beat Nabs, two points. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that this came out 1890. Oh man, this is gonna be embarrassing. And Tom is off by 30 years too. That's another two pointer. 1950, we're locking in for uh... Number seven. Wow, three in a row off by exactly 30. That's two points for history documentary. So I know it's a very local area and I can't, and there's not a lot around it, but even still probably the fifties is a safe bet to where people would know what the hell a telephone is and they'd have access to it. Final guess on ad number seven is gonna be 1958. Dang, 38 years off on that one. No points for that guess. Obviously this ad had to come at a time when enough people had telephones to make calling in a grocery order worthwhile, and yet long enough to be when a single digit would connect you to the version of DoorDash at the time. So I'll guess early 20th century, say 1908. All right, that's only 12 years off. Dr. Czar scores four points and ties Genie Vlogger at 30. I'm gonna say this is 19. Okay, here we go. All comes down to this. Ginny Vlogger just needs to score anything here to take first place. Are we gonna have co-champions or just one top dog? I'm, I wanna say this is 1920s maybe. 1910s or 1920s. I'm gonna go 1915. And Ginny Vlogger seals it five years off. That's worth eight points and the win. Let's check the final scores. History documentary ends with 10, Tom Walker with 24, 
Mr. Beat 26, Tipsy Fish at 28, History and Headlines with 30, and Genie Vlogger still up on top with a ridiculously impressive 38. Also, just for fun, if you add up the total years that each contestant was off by, this is what you get. All right, and that's all she wrote. Ginny Vlogger, you are the weird ass super champion. Huge thank you to all of our contestants. I'm gonna put links to everybody's stuff in the description. Go check them all out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm out of here.